which is the voice of fear. This is the voice that says, if you give, there may not be enough left over for you. This is the voice that constantly asks, what if? What if I don't have enough for this month? What if I lose everything? What if I don't get my fair share? What if he or she has more? What if the economy collapses? What if I am not rehired again? What if um, things never return back to the way that it was? So this is that voice in our head that constantly asks us, asks us, what if, what if, what if? Now we will wrestle with these voices from time to time, but again, as we grow in Christ, the more generous we will become. Generosity quells the voice of fear and self-gratification. And surely as we pursue the path of generosity, we become better because of it. I'd like to introduce you to three women. Actually, I came across um, the mother of these three women um, from Coach Gina. And I'd like to introduce them to you one. Her name is Susan. She's a CEO of YouTube. Janet, she's a pediatrician. She's an association, association professor of pediatrics. And Anne, who is a CEO of the 23andMe company. So again, um, if you have not already noticed already, the common thing between these three women is that they are sisters. And the mom of these three sisters is a woman by the name of Esther Wojcicki. And she was once asked, what are some tips on how to parent the next generation in such a time as this? And so she gives four pointers. Number one, teach your kids to care. I grew up believing that it was my duty to contribute to my community and to make my, my community better. And all of this influenced my daughters, not just because I sat them down and gave them a lecture on the importance of community, but because they felt that I truly cared. You know, there's a difference between like lecturing someone and giving them like a bunch of words to listen to versus, you know, walking side by side with your children and allowing them to see and feel from you that there is genuine care that we place in the causes um, that we are fighting for, in the community that we are fighting for. So which brings us to her second point, the importance of community. How many of us take up causes and show our kids through our behavior how to fight for our communities? How many children feel empowered to take on the biggest challenges of our time and find ways to contribute? It's sad to say, but I've noticed more and more children are becoming more and more focused on themselves. Sometimes it feels like we're training a nation and a world of narcissists. Number three, the American idea is all wrong. Now people are growing up feeling like they're at the center of the universe where we are focused on money, thinking that it will make us happy and fulfilled. It's the American idea. Get rich, then do nothing. Get sit on a beach, go out for an expensive dinner, go to different places. But again, these kinds of pursuits turn people into narcissists and thrill addicts. As a result, people end up isolated and even depressed. And our fourth point is again, soul in the game. Prioritize service and purpose. We're chasing money and possessions, not service and purpose. If we have purpose at all, it is to make ourselves happy. But if there's one thing I know, it's this. We are happiest as well as most beneficial to society when we are doing things to help others. I remember one person was saying, it's hard to throw yourself a pity party when you have you have redirected your energy, you have redirected your resources, you have redirected your time and your abilities and your talent to making the world around you better. Proverbs 11 in the message version, the world of the generous, what does it say, Paul? Gets larger and larger. So beautiful. The world of the stingy gets smaller and smaller. The one who blesses others is abundantly blessed and those who help others, they too 
are helped.